welcome to the webinar. Um, my name is Yvette Adams and I'll be taking you through financial management back to basics tonight. I just want to check that you've got the full screen webinar up, so we'll just make sure that's happening. Okay, there we go, there's our slide. So yeah, as you can see, um, these webinars are an initiative of the Department of Employment, Economic Development and Innovation, otherwise known as CD, and we're very uh, proud to be associated with them and delivering them for you tonight. Sorry about this. Okay. This is what we've got in store for you. We're just going to spend about five minutes on the intro. I can see a few familiar names that have logged in. So some of you have been on these webinars before and will be very familiar with the technology and comfortable. However, I'm sure you'll appreciate, in case it's anybody's first time, we will spend a little bit of time just running through and giving you a quick orientation on the technology, because these are very live and interactive. Um, this is not like school. We do want you to participate. We're going to be asking you to show your emotions, check stuff in, respond to poll and ask questions. So um, if you do that, you'll get absolutely the most out of the webinar. Then we're going to revisit some key points from the workbook. So the emails you would have received after signing up would have encouraged you to download a workbook. Now, Cedar puts these out. They're really um, amazing resources. They are fairly chunky, around 80 pages. So I do appreciate, as a small business owner, you may um, find it's hard to find the time to go through that. But if you do, you'll certainly get the most out of the webinar. If you haven't done it yet, even after the webinar, it's a good time to go back, revisit some of those points and perhaps even work through some of the exercises. Next, we'll review and finally, we'll leave about 10 minutes to ask questions. And tonight, I'll be um, also having on here um, a qualified and very experienced accountant who I'll introduce you to in a moment. So it's a fantastic opportunity. If you've got any burning financial management related questions, to ask a true professional and get her feedback on it. Okay, so onto this technology. If you look down in the bottom right of your window screen, you should see um, some kind of thing looking like this. Now, I also want to quickly, you see my mouse moving here, direct you to this um, little arrow area. If you click on that, that will expand. So if you can't currently see a list of participants and names, you need to click on that so you've got a bigger view. I seem to be missing a little slide in there. Um, I also want to direct you to um, a few other items you can click on. Um, let me click forward. No, it's definitely not in there. Sorry about this. Okay, um, I want you to, uh, once you've expanded it, look and you'll see a toolbar area where there is a hand. Now, this is a good way to show that you have a question or that this applies to you. So just to show me you've got this technology, can you all show me your hand quickly? Great, Christine's got hers up, Karen, Tina, Vivian, great, I can see lots of hands. Now here's a little tip, when you do place it up, please also put it down afterwards by clicking on it yet again, so I know that your question has been answered and you're quite happy sitting there. Next one I'm on is a green tip, uh, if you can show me your green tip, that's a good way of indicating that yes, the answer applies to you or um, this is certainly the case for you. You can see people too and sky. I haven't seen any indication from yet. If I could encourage you to try and find those hands and tips just so you're going to get the most out of the webinar. Next one along is a red cross. So look for the red cross. That's, of course, it's a way to show that you just agree. It doesn't apply to you. You don't have them face some of your red crosses. Yeah, we totally have got people here who have done this before. You're um, all showing me your red crosses. Now, Jimmy will jump the cross to the next one along, which is the um, person to slow down. Now, um, there's a speed up and a slow down one. Do you feel like this presentation is going too slow for your liking? Show me um, how you're feeling with the pace by indicating that. Do you feel like I'm going too fast? Which is probably more likely. Um, click on that. Now, look, I do have a tendency to go fast, but I do also want you to appreciate we have a fair few slides to run through. We don't want to keep you any longer than one hour tonight, so um, I will be uh, rushing through a few things just to make sure we can cover as much ground as possible. Finally, my absolute favourite, the emoticons. Um, if you could just drop down how you're feeling tonight. We've got Karen uh, kind of giggling, Christine smiling, 
team is smiling, you're all smiling, some of you are laughing, fantastic. Anyone got a cup of tea with them and show me? I certainly have, I've got a cup of green tea, you can show me a cup of tea. Now, the light bulb I really like as well, because if you have an idea from something I or the other guest speaker um, has given you tonight, it's really a good way to show um, that you've got a great idea just from something you said by showing us the light bulb as well. So, are we all pretty comfortable? Ready to move on? Show me what you think. Excellent. Seeing green tips and smiles. We're going places. Fantastic. Okay, so for those of you who have not met me before, my name is Yvette Adams. Um, I have started four different businesses from scratch, two of which have since been sold. My first one was when I was 17 years old. It was a newspaper site sitting around the boardroom table um, at the tender age of 17 selling a business. I then went on at 26 to start an online business selling t-shirts um, globally. So it was purely online, e-commerce enabled website. And now I'm the owner and director of the Creative Collective, which is a creative agency based on the beautiful Sunshine Coast of Queensland. We have clients throughout the country and even some international ones, right through from startups to large corporates. Now, they work, we work across industries, so hopefully I've got some experience in one of the industries that you operate in. As Melanie, our guest speaker, also has a lot of um, experience too. I'm a mother of two, so hands up those of you parents out there juggling the business thing with the parenting. There's his tips and hands. Yep, not Josh, he's not. Um, good to see. It's, um, it is a juggle. But these days, um, I love training and assisting others, so I absolutely love this webinar format. And if this is your first time, I'm pretty sure you will too. Um, I love it because it's lifestyle friendly, but I also really get a kick out of helping business owners. So I certainly hope I can do that to you today. Now right now, I'm just going to do a quick live across the video. So you can see me. Hi, this is me live from the on the Sunshine Coast. Um, I'm not going to keep this on tonight because some of you are, are coming in from all over Queensland and I realise that your internet connections are sparing. So I'm just going to use up quite a lot of your bandwidth and flow the presentation. So I'm going to show you I am a real person, say hello, um, but we will switch that off now for the rest of the presentation. Okay. Now, what we're talking about tonight, this is um, financial management and for some of you, you may actually get on and you may only get a couple of pearls of wisdom out of this presentation. Others of you may find it really, really valuable. There is this basic presentation on financial management and there is one slightly more advanced coming up, which I will um, indicate to you the date for at the end of the presentation. But what we're looking at today is a range of things, and first up, we're going to look at an accountant's role in your business. Think about those of you who already have a dedicated accountant that you're just 100% happy with. Got a fair show of hands? Quite a few of you. Leah's got a red cross, so she's changed it to a tick, that's good to see. You look you have not indicated anything. So that was a two-part question, really. One, have you got an accountant? But two, you've got one more happy with, really, okay. Gillian's saying maybe not. Now, that's, that's important to look at. These are the if you're in the early stages of your business. They're good to provide the required accounting and bookkeeping expertise. You know, how should you code things? How should you set things up? What sorts of um, measurements are going to be important to you as a business? It's just some of the things. Um, they will provide a range of tax solutions because who needs to, you know, um, work out how to not pay too much tax? That's a good thing, right, for everybody? So um, they can certainly minimise the tax for a range of different solutions, which I'm sure Melanie will introduce us to. They also provide advice on how to set up simplified financial management systems. You know, sometimes you might spend a lot of time trying to work out the best way to extract information, analyze information, work out really truly where you're at, which as a business owner you need to know. So they, it might only take them a little bit of time, but it's well worth investing that in. And you know, they may have done it a hundred times and assistance and expertise even in buying or selling your business. So if you are looking to merge, acquire, sell, buy, there are all reasons to go and see an accountant too. 
there's actually lots of other reasons, but I'm pretty sure there's some, a few ideas that will put you in the space. So um, next up, I'm going to introduce you to Melanie. There's a lovely face. They can picture the earth. Um, she's also based on the Sunshine Coast. So, um, you know, a bit of a, a pair, if you like, a, a dynamic businesswoman um, here in the area I operate out of. You can see on the slide there that no one has wanted to be an accountant from age eight. So talk about starting early and knowing what she wanted to do. Um, she's been through doing cash books since the age of 15, also starting early there. She's a qualified accountant, of course, with a Bachelor of Business and Chartered Member of Institute as a Chartered Accountant. And she worked for a company here on the Sunshine Coast called CJT Accountant Owner, um, which is exciting. And in particular, she has lots of experience in the farming, manufacturing, superannuation, and retirement. So, Melanie, I'm just going to um, unmute you. Um, welcome to our webinar. Thanks for that. Hello, everyone. So, Melanie, um, just tell us a little bit more about PJT Accountants, I guess, and what your sort of area of expertise is there. Yeah, so for PJT Accountants, we're probably a little bit different to the normal accountants that you've probably all experienced. Um, but there's a lot of accountants out there that do work similar to ourselves. Um, our focus is working with business owners to help them grow their businesses and just answer any questions that you have that sort of keep you up at night that you're not sure of because our expertise is um, making businesses grow, um, whereas your expertise is in your industry. So we work quite closely with our clients in those sort of areas of, that they're struggling with in their businesses, which is quite exciting and rewarding. Sure, sure, it sounds like it. And farming, manufacturing, superannuation and retirement, why those areas? Are you a, a farm girl originally? Well, I grew up on farms. So that's how farming came about. Um, manufacturing it just seems to fit with the Sunshine Coast, um, but being on the coast because there's a lot of different businesses, um, they're sort of two that I've got quite a few clients in, but we tend to have clients in a lot of different industries, um, which just keeps the days interesting, and a lot of businesses have the same base work that they, um, that's how the business runs, and then it's just learning each industry the little things that, to tweak there to make the business really perform well. Right, and just to paint a little bit more of a picture, the awards you've won, can you just outline some of those to the listeners tonight? Yeah, so I um, won the Sunshine Coast Business Women's Network Young Business Person of the Year, um, and I also won the Kalangi Chamber Business Person of the Year last year, and my business has won um, professional Business of the Year, two years in a row for the Kalandra Chamber, and we're now in their Hall of Fame. So, That's fantastic. And you're quite a young partner to be a partner in an accountancy firm too, aren't you? Yes, yes. I'm um, 31, so good. I've been doing this for So, it's good. Fantastic. Well, it's great to have you, Melanie, because I still don't want all the tricky financial questions at the end. I'm going to be sending them straight to you. And I hope you guys online are going to make the most of Melanie being on here. So let's move on with some of the, the stuff you've got on here for. Um, look, this is all about what is basic financial management. So again, I encourage you to go back to the workbook to truly get a grasp on this and get the most out of this whole experience. But at a bare minimum, as you read in the workbook, you have to analyse in order to manage your businesses successfully. Now, I know how it is. I wear all the hats. I also have to look after, as a small business owner, the IT, the HR, the marketing, um, the admin, and, of course, the finance. I don't know about you, but for me, finance can sometimes be left to last because it seems like a big job. It can seem like a job hard to get your head around at times, but it's certainly one that's worth making the effort for. And the three that um, we're suggesting you do have to look at in particular is the balance sheet the profit and loss statement, and the cash flow forecast. So, Melanie, why are these three financial statements the most important ones? Um, the important thing for these three is that actually tells you where you are in your business. So, the profit and loss and balance sheet, profit and loss tells you how the business has performed, so what sort of money you've made in the business. The balance sheet tells you what sort of assets you've got, but also what sort of debts you need to pay. And it sets it up into what you need to pay Immediately in the future, which is the current um, debt, or your current assets is money that's coming in the short term. Um, 
and the non-current is your long-term debt. The cash flow I find is one of the most important because that tells you what money you've got to pay for different things over time and your cash flow is what tells you what you need to be turning over in the future um, and what if you don't get money in today, what effect it's going to have on the business long term. Yeah. Um, so those three, if there's anything that clients can't understand those sort of things, um, it's really difficult to make financial decisions and once you've got those, you know what drives your business, but makes making those decisions easier, it gives you more that peace of mind that when you make a decision, you going to be the right decision. Um, so they're really important to understand. And to some business owners, I find that it's good if they can make them for their business partners and that's maybe graphical if they can't understand the actual numbers on the page, makes them graph and that just showing how the performance has actually happened and what they're aiming for can also help as well as they're not numbers people. But you can work with your accountant to get something that you can understand, but always if you're paying an accountant to help you with accounts, the biggest thing is for them to explain you to ask them the questions to go, what does this mean? Um, and what does it mean in my layman terms rather than in accountants' jargon sure. um, is really important. Now, I'm really curious to know from everyone listening right now, out of these three things, balance sheet, profit and loss, and cash flow, are you guys all looking at these on a regular basis? Do you understand them? Or is that why you're on here? So put up a, a green text or a... Okay, we've already seen a few crosses. I appreciate your honesty. And look, this is a big benefit of getting on these webinars too. I hope you can see the list and I hope you can see that you're not alone. There are other people who struggle with this stuff um, and it's good that you're getting online and learning all about it. If you do feel like you've got the handle on it, that's okay too. I'm sure we can give you some more information as we move in. But all great points and thank you for that, Melanie. Okay, everyone online, I also want you to think about one, whether you've got a dedicated accountant, I did kind of ask it at the start, and whether you've discussed with an accountant the records you need to keep to maintain control of your business. Because as I'm sure Melanie will agree in a moment when I ask her a little bit more, um, some businesses need to focus on certain reports more and may need more than just those three that we've indicated. You've also got to decide what system you'll use. My is very popular in Australia, QuickBooks is, you know, very popular too, probably more popular in America. Um, Zero is a sort of newcomer but gaining a lot of momentum. That's a purely online cloud computing system that personally I use. I'm making my groceries from my office to Zero and I love it. And there's lots of others out there too. You've also got to consider, and it's only sensible to be as efficient as you can in a business, to integrate whatever account system you go for with your point of sale or also known as a POS or other core business activities. So for example, if you're selling stuff online, and rather than re-enter your sales that occur online into an account system, because that takes time and there's a margin for error, you can automatically feed into it. That's a beautiful thing, and people, that really is possible. Similarly, if you were running a retail store, it is possible with some systems to sell an item, and it automatically goes into your account system. So again, no need to double enter. And you can also get help with set up or managing it. So I'm just going to open a poll now which is going to ask you guys to pick all the boxes which apply from that list of things you have got set up um, and, uh, you, yeah, you're quite happy with. But while you guys complete that poll, we'll give you a few moments to pick as many as apply to you. It should just pop up in a window in front of you. Um, Melanie, what sort of system do you find people are using these days? Is it more of a QuickBooks or Zero or others? Um, I think it's important to work with your accountant. Uh, or your bookkeeper, as to what they're most comfortable with, with using. Um, the biggest thing I find is that as business owners, if you are, for example, a plumber, sometimes it's really good to have someone else do some of the bookwork for you um, because what it might not be your specialty and a lot of people stress a lot over doing the financials where if they spent more time in their business, Selling some products, it would make up, it would easily pay for someone else to help them with these things. Because you need to make sure your financials are accurate and that you're always getting them on a timely basis so that you can make these decisions. Um, I find my of the really popular one, um, and QuickBooks. Some accountants use programs called Banklink for people that don't necessarily have staff or a lot of, um, debtors and creditors or people you owe in that to measure. 
Um, it's a quite an easy system that can memorize transactions for clients as well. Um, but the key question I tell my clients is that at the end of each year, um, when you get your tax done or if you go there quarterly to get your back done, ask the feedback of how you can improve next time in what, how you're putting the data in or if there's better ways to do stuff because your accountant will know if there's a quicker way to do something or if you're not coding stuff right so you're not getting accurate reports out. They can let you know and then it's easy for you to fix up going forward so that then through the year you're getting more accurate reports rather than just once a year getting accurate reports. So work with what your strengths are with your accountant as to what's the best system for you and what value. Um, because it's no use giving them a system if it's not suited to how they work. Because some accountants don't, recognize, don't use some systems. But I tend to use a wide range. Um, it's good to see them. And I tend to match my programs to my clients as to what their skills and abilities are and how much input they want to have or not. All right. And um, an interesting point to make, just because it's, it's coming up in my world a lot lately and I wouldn't mind your feedback on it, um, you know, Xero is an online cloud computing system and it is quite beneficial because clients can work on it from home or they can have staff members from home or systems go down or if cyclones hit like we're being predicted, they can continue work and nothing's lost. And the other thing I really like about it is that there's no downtime. I don't just zip up the file and wait for the accountant to deal with it before I commence work again. But I've heard that my album QuickBooks are moving into that cloud computing space. Are you seeing that happening? Yes, all the programs are moving to that sort of thing. I'm noticing um, there's resistance from people to move there. I know you have to watch your internet speeds and that sort of thing with it, or if the internet goes down, that can cause you a problem with being able to access your financials. So that's sort of a issue people are overcoming at the moment. Mm -hmm. But... The majority of programs are going to that sort of that method, um, so I don't think it'll be long there. Most of them will be web-based, just for ease of use. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan, but I appreciate that. Yeah, good point. If internet goes down, you're a little bit stuck, but um, yeah, internet in Australia, unfortunately, is getting better all the time. Okay, look, in the interest of time, we better move on. Um, I just haven't got. There we go. There we go. Over we go. Right. There's a basic accounting principle, um, which is money in, money out. Now, I remember my partner studying bookkeeping, so he was a darling and set up my, my, when I started my business, and that was a concept he came back from the my of course, um, you know, very strong on. So as a business owner, what do you need to know? Well, when it comes to money in, there's three main sources, no matter what business you do, and that is sales, what you receive from selling your goods or services, Owner's capital, the money you or partners invest in the business with the aim of obviously making a profit, and it's currently accountants usually call it proprietary capital. And then loans can be from financial institutions like banks or credit unions or from investors. Um, now, of course, on those last two, you'd kind of want to have some sort of strategy to pay them back. So, um, how do each of these um, areas impact? Um, um, how would I ask this? How can you generate greater money in Melanie? Because I guess that's the, the thing that all businesses want to achieve, isn't it? Yeah, the, um, probably the key for money in um, is your sales. is the thing that you can most manipulate. Because loans to the owner's capital, that's your money that you're putting in that you're going to want to return. So to get a return on your money, you need to make profit because there is no point putting money into a business if you're not going to, if you could have put the same amount of money into the bank um, and earned more on term deposit rates, so if you invested your money in the bank and the bank would have given you a hundred dollars for it, but you put it in your business and you actually get no return in the long term, um, that's an issue, a difficult area. So the biggest area with money in that you can help your business is focusing on your sales, which is knowing what your product is that you sell it, um, knowing who your key people you're selling to are, um, and having a good marketing strategy or a good growth strategy for your business as to how you can increase your sales. Um, lending is getting harder and harder for small business um, because you need to have property or something to secure it against, um, or you need to have good profits to show that you can pay it back to the bank. So the easiest um, way is with the sales is having a good marketing plan and growth strategy for your business to increase your sales is probably the way I would focus. Sure. 
And I would say as well, even within sales, it's kind of going into another topic. And if this is of interest to you, certainly get on other webinars we run, like strengthening your business or retaining your business to cover these types of things. But within sales, you know, if you can diversify it into multiple revenue streams so that if you lose one sales revenue, you've got others to fall back on. That's very important in times like these when some can dry up or certainly decrease. Um, recurring revenues, if you can think of ways that through your business you can set up any kind of membership model or models where there is a recurring payment that comes in no matter what. It really does depend what you do as to whether that's achievable. Um, Melanie, any other suggestions within that? There's quite a few ways that you can have sales. They don't have to be a straightforward one-off sale, do they? No, and it's the key I see at the moment, especially in the current economic climate, is the people who really know how they get their sales, like who their target market is and how they generate that income, are the people that are still doing all right because they're able to be quite flexible with how they deal with things um, and to ensure that they are picking up extra people to get those sales or looking at other markets that would add on to their sales. Um, so that's sort of the key area to generate this sort of growth. Okay, well, um, let's keep moving on. Um, we talked about money in then, but what about money out? We all want to stop that, um, pretty much. But the type of money out, the way the money can go out the door is through stocks because anything you invest in products to resell or use um, is, is going to be money out. It's kind of, um, I remember when I had my T-shirt business, um, you know, I, I had money, but it was in my T-shirts in the wardrobe um, and in and, and the different warehouses and distribution channels I was using. So it wasn't all that good for me unless they were actually being sold. Operating expenses, well, the money you spend to operate your business on a day-to-day -day basis, whatever that is for you, whether it's fancy sales, wages, you know, photocopiers, um, internet, you've got to tally up all of those and, and reduce the money that's going out. Assets that you bring to keep, like fixtures, fittings, machinery, vehicles. You're not sure where to code those things when you purchase them. They're assets. Um, repayment, loans that your business has received. That could be to banks, credit unions. And then there's also dividends or profit distribution. That's the part of owning a business. You can actually take out those dividends and distribute profit. So any tips um, here, Melanie, on how business owners can reduce their money going out? Um, the key is looking at when the money's going out is one of the key things. But the other thing is to bear in mind that your stock and operating expenses are profit and loss expenses, whereas assets, repayments and dividends are all balance sheet items. So often I see people and they say, oh, I'll say this is how much profit you've made for the year. And they'll go, but I don't have that much money in the bank. Because the money isn't in the bank, the money's gone to buy new assets or to repay loans. Um, so financially, the business might be in a better position on the balance sheet, but it's just not sitting in the bank. Um, the money out, the key is having your cash flow. Your cash flow document will tell you these things. Um, stocks are good things to make sure that your monitor, if your stock prices are increasing, you need to make sure that your sales prices are increasing or that you're, doing, you're getting more efficient to do something that you're not losing that profit margin um, on the stock. And that's probably something else in another session is looking at what your gross profit session is, gross profit margins are, so that you're getting profit from what you're selling and how to set your prices um, is a key thing that I find people struggle with. Mm. Operating expenses are your overhead. And you'll find with these is they're not things that you can cut all the time. They're something I tell clients to review. And every six months, just have a quick review and make sure that everything's fine. You do things like your telephones and those sort of things. Review, have a schedule or then you review them. But they're not things that you can cut every week to make a difference to the bottom line. Like improving your sales or improving um, how much you buy your stock for, your efficiency in producing your stock, that will make a bigger impact to your bottom line than looking at your overhead expenses on a, on a monthly basis, your operating expenses. So, it's bearing in mind those things of where you spend your time because as a business owner, you're limited with what time you actually do have 
when you're trying to run the business as well. Um, is there any questions on that sort of stuff? Yeah, well, I was going to back to questions at the very end, Melanie, because I've got okay. quite a few slides to get on through. So we'll give them all the answers we can, and then if there's anything left over at the end, we'll um, open it up from then. So um, looking a little bit more at cash flow, this is a huge issue for a lot of business owners, and you know, with through all this economic downturn, um, I've actually walked well, through some of the other um, webinars who show the best facts, and they are the two big reasons businesses fail. Um, and we don't like talking about doom and gloom too much, but it's a cold hard fact. Number one is growth, either not growing fast enough um, to sustain the debts and things they need to and set up, or um, to growing too fast that they can't sustain the growth and they can't deliver and keep a good high customer service. Um, just yeah, so and like Melanie just indicated, even though the, the books might be good, the money in the bank might be so bad that they just can't continue. So look how the numbers work in terms of the cash flow, as you can see on the screen, is number one, set of selling price. Number two, sell your products or services. That's pretty straightforward. But you've got to calculate your gross profit. And if you jump on the strengthening your business webinars, we actually show you in more depth how to do that. You've then got to pay your operating expenses and calculate your net profit. That is what you're left over with at the end of the day. Now, when you initially set your selling prices for whatever your product or service is going to be, you may think, well, I'm, you know, kind of making double what I'm buying it for, or, you know, it's a 100% markup, and that may sound all very well and good. But it really depends on what you're doing, because by the time you do sell it and calculate the gross profit and pay those operating expenses, like Melanie talks about, phones and internet and all of that, you may find there's not actually a lot left at the end of the day. And I saw a great example of this recently. A person who was in the business of landscaping, he was charging something like $70 an hour, which he thought was pretty good. And But then when a mentor went through and broke down exactly his expenses, how long it took him to travel, the petrol, the doing the job, the tools and equipment he needed to upkeep, fertilizer, et cetera, et cetera, it was actually, he was paying the customer $5 an hour is what it worked out at. And the penny dropped and he was really quite shocked. So pretty um, important exercise to go through and um, calculate the net profit. I just would like to know from the participant if you've ever heard of this concept and, and understand the difference between your sort of gross profit and net profit and whether you sort of have an idea of what your net profit is, guys. So. We can see a show of hands or we'll tick. Josh does. Sandra does. A few of you do. Tina doesn't. That's something that perhaps you want to work on. Speak to yourself, Tina. Um, I'll just move on, um, Melanie, in the interest of time and just pull um, you up on a um, definitely on a question on this one. Apart from cash flow, there is that balance sheet. So if you look at that a little bit more in depth, the balance sheet is, if you, you know, just pull it down and completely simplify it, this. It is what you own, what assets you have. So that could be a property if you operate out of the premises, could be a car, could be, um, you know, a computer and other equipment, machinery, etc. Minus what you own, liability. Um, and that is what you're worth. That is the owner's equity. Now, the higher that is, um, the, the more, um, I guess, successful, in one sense, a business is. And balance sheet really is giving, giving you a snapshot of your business at any one time. So, um, what, are, what are the benefits of finding out how your business is doing at, at a point in time, Melanie? How does the balance sheet help? Well, the balance sheet just tells you... Um, how much in assets you've got to pay what liabilities you've got. So it tells you whether you are ahead of the business or whether the business is struggling. Um, because if you don't have enough current assets, so assets that you can liquidate within 12 months or that you receive the money for in 12 months, if your um, current liabilities is more than your current assets, well, that means you're going to have to find a way to make those repayments um, with making extra profit or something like that to be able to do it. But also the balance sheet tells you what you actually own in the business, like do you say goodwill in the business? Is there physical assets that underpin this business um, to make it successful that it's working towards paying off or anything like that? So it gives you what your value within the business is. Um, so if you were going to sell your business, would it be fair to say it's pretty important that your owner equity is really up there? That's kind of how the business is valued, isn't it? Um, it may not be. 
Um, because it does depend on what MP structure you operate through. Um, it, generally, the owner's equity will tell you what money a lot of times you're owed from the business, so it might be profits that haven't been paid out to you yet. Um, it's probably more on that sort of side of things. Um, your goodwill and that within your assets sort of will tell you what sort of value the business is worth if you get your accountant to value your business for you. Um, that will be more um, likely, but it's probably another session to go into all the different, because there's a lot of different ways to value your business, and every business is different, so it's probably not, um, probably a bit complex yeah. to go through in the time we've got tonight. Sure. And the fact, a lot of times you find your own equity is what you're actually owed from the business, which is important for yourself to show that you're getting some return. Sure. Now, just um, to warn everyone, we've kind of still got quite a few slides, so we'll just speed up a little bit through here, Melanie, and I, I may just um, skip through and just ask you the odd one and get you to keep it really short. Um, the profit and loss statement, if that's a new term to you, or P&L as some people call it, is summarising your business earnings and expenses over a period of time. You can run a profit and loss statement over a year, and if you're going to go to the bank for a loan, that's certainly something they may want to see. They might want to see three years of profit and loss even. Um, but you can also do a profit and loss over a month period. Um, myself as a company, we do choose to look at ours at least once a month. And it's going to look something like the um, one you can see on the right. Now that graphic is taken straight out of the workbook, so yet again I remind you to go to that workbook and um, there's some great the templates and things. So really you should know that, that net prop, the gross profit there in the middle in the green and you've got that net profit down at the bottom. That net profit is a really um, important one and ideally that will be um, in the green and not the red. So the net profit, really, what it is is money left over. I hope there's a bit more than what you can see on the screen there, if I fill a note and a few coins for you. But in order to operate a healthy business, um, you need to make sure this net profit figure um, is, is always up and, and making sure that what business is viable. So, you know, it's including all the employee salaries and, and all of that coming out afterwards. So hands up, guys, who, who is regularly looking at their profit and loss at the moment? Is there a show of hands or a check? A few of you are. Excellent. Leah's admitting she isn't. And look, action guys, if you're not, how about you go and take a look at it? The good account system will actually just let you run a profit and loss, so it can be as easy as, you know, finding the area where the profit and loss is. It's going to be different on every system, but it could be under reports, for instance. And then selecting the time period you want to know about and uh, setting that up and hitting run and then actually taking it away and having a look at it. Work out what you can by yourself, but also not a bad idea to go and meet with an accountant. That would be very true, wouldn't it, Melanie? Definitely, because they can explain it to you, is the key. Yeah. So once they've explained it, then you'll be right. And wouldn't it be a good idea to, like, print that out, work out where you're clear, um, where you have questions, and then you'd maximise your time with your accountant too, wouldn't you, rather than sort of going in having not even looked at the things before you got there. Yeah, definitely. And ask the question, have, look at it beforehand and have a list of questions. And ask your question, you, your accountant knows how to grow businesses. They know how you can change figures on the profit and loss to make the business have a better position at the end. So challenge them, ask them questions of, okay, well, my sales and gross profit this, what effect will it have if I increase this and how would I do that? And they can give you strategies to do that. So use their skills. Um, they've got a wealth of knowledge that they're keeping as a secret. <laughs> they sure do. You just sort of tap into it. Okay, break it even point is also a really important concept when it comes to your financial management. So the break even point is the volume of sales you need to cover your cost with no profit or loss made. In other words, you break even. So hopefully this little graph there kind of shows where that is at. But people, do you know what your break-even point is? You see a show of hands? This is one that a lot of people don't actually know. Um, I'd like to see a show of hands if you do know your break-even. Interesting. A lot more red crosses. So, can I encourage all of you who showed a red cross to go back to the workbook and look up the section on the break-even and start going and, and spending the time, allocate the time, Lock it out so no one else can steal it from you and work out your break even between you making money or losing money. Um, so you need to know 
And it gives you that peace of mind. Okay, if I make this much in sales for this year, I know I'll cover all my overhead expenses, all my operating costs, and my loan repayments and those sort of things. So your cash flow forecast can help you work that out, but it gives you that peace of mind that you have enough money there to pay for everything. Um, so it's the most important, one of the most important figures you can work out. So, and I mean, you need to review that regularly too when there's any major change to your business. So, for instance, I know a certain figure that is our break-even point, um, and we, we've been very lucky in a growth industry and right through the DSC, so it's not gone anywhere near it. We've always been far exceeding it. But um, there has been the odd month where we've got a bit close. It's been a slow start for the month. And I've said to the guys, and we actually uh, operate an open book policy here, so team meetings, we, we show our profit and loss to all team members, no matter how junior, even you know, the 17-year-old trainee has a look at them, and um, we tell them how close we are to break even. So that can work both ways, and uh, again, it's kind of another topic we do talk about in other webinars, but sometimes it really motivates them to know that their contribution can improve the position and um, and get you over that point. And, and to know, um, to know there's not any money for new computers because we're only at break even and not in the profit point yet. Okay. It's really important, um, just quickly, it's important when you have months like coming up to December, January and that there, some businesses are slower. Um, just for your own peace of mind that you know that, okay, if I had this big month a month before, I'm going to be all right the next month. Um, that's where it becomes important. Sure, and putting that money away for a rainy day that, that a lot of business owners get quite confused about. They'll look at the net profit and they will say, I don't have that 24000 that 50000 that 100000 or whatever's appearing in that net profit line. Um, in my bank, I have $2, or I have $2,000 is far from it. So, you know, the difference is cash is considered cash and check. It's a liquid asset of the business. It's the inflow of money into the bank account also can flow out, as we now know. Um, and it doesn't pay all bills because some bills are extended on credit terms. That means you can accept the service or product and not pay for it until later. Profit, on the other hand, is, as we can see there, taking the cost away from the sales revenue. Um, the money earned by the business is represented just on paper. Um, so, as it says there in green, a making a profit doesn't mean a business will have money in the bank. Any other comments on that one, Melanie? Um, this is where your cash flow forecast becomes important um, because then you know where the money is sitting and what you can do to get the money into the bank account, whether it be looking at your debtors or your stock terms, which we'll go through those sort of things in the next couple of slides to show how you can actually help your cash position. I'm sure Will, she's the one step ahead of me. Um, here's the cash flow money in. It's movement of money into your cash flow. It's usually cash from the sales of goods or services and loans to the business. And the outflow is for those payments of goods purchase, debt repayments, tax repayments, which you should be putting money away or aside for, and payments for the purchase of assets. Um, any, any comments on this one, Melanie? No, and that's the main thing there as to what it is. And you just need to make sure that your inflows are more than your outflows. Sure. Um, it really is that simple. I really like this slide because I'm a real visual person and I hope that no matter what business you're in, you can then pick which um, of those three circles apply to you and look at how cash could potentially be flowing around in your business. So I can see here in this middle slide, I'm a service-based business, as is Melanie as an accountant. They provide a service. So, you know, um, there's a sale. Um, you need to recover that money um, through collections and then that brings cash into the business and so it goes down. So you can see the difference um, on some others. There could be a stock involved if it's a trading business, as in more product-based. And the manufacturing, which um, <coughs> Melanie talks about having lots of experience with, is even a little bit different again because you've got the raw materials, the production, the finished product, quite a few more items required to get that cash flow in. So um, is there any easier models for cash flow, Melanie? Or um, you know, what's your experiences with the different businesses? Um, with the different businesses, you really need to know what your terms are that you collect your money on. 
Um, so when you make a sale, how long is it till you get paid? But also how long is it till you have to pay your suppliers? Um, especially if you looked at like the manufacturing business, to make it a bit easier, I've got a client in the nursery industry. So they have to grow the product, then they sell it. Then they deal with a big group, big um, retail, I think it takes 60 days to pay them. So for them, in that time, it may take 60 days for them to grow the product and 60 days till they actually get paid for the product. So that's 120 days. But within those 120 days, they have to make sure that from their last payment, they've got enough cash aside to pay for the plant, for the um, plots, for the wages, all those things. So that's where the cash flow is important because instead of robbing people to pay for, or you're waiting for the next payment because they have to make all their outflows before they actually get the money in. So that's where it's important in your business to understand how these things work. So the way you can change them is having a look at, okay, well, when do I pay for stock? Do I pay for stock after I've received the money or do I pay for it before? So if you're paying for it before, sometimes you might use things like an overdraft or you need to make sure, especially if you're an importer or something, that you've left cash or something like to pay for those before you actually get the money in. Um, also looking at your sales, what your payment terms are. Can you get people to pay up front? Do people pay a deposit? Um, that's one thing I did in my business. I offered a discount so people pay up front. Um, I have seven-day payment terms and I make sure that I'm on to people on the seventh day if they haven't paid. Um, so you can't be wrapped because if you give people leeway, then they'll pay you later, but you still want to make all your other payments. So it's important that you know the number of days for each step in your business here. And that's something you see a and can help you work out. But the more you can cut in the day, the better your cash flow will be. And cash flow for me is one of the key things people are talking about, um, having trouble with in their business. I've heard reports on the street too, Melanie, that um, you know, businesses who have previously had 30-day credit terms um, have been experiencing people pushing them out to 60 and 120 through the CFC, and that's kind of been some of the outfall of it. Because either A, they just couldn't afford it in, inside any earlier time frame, or um, B, they were waiting for money from other people, so it's just this chain reaction that flows through. So I think the suggestion on seven-day payment terms, which is certainly what I do too, um, is highly recommended because then maybe you'll get it within 30, um, which is still longer, but um, like you also suggested, you have to really be on them. And if it's any um, tips for those of you out there that get collection as a problem or um, in my early days of business, um, you know, it was a bit ad hoc to raise the invoice and my of, and we would get around and get on to them. We found it very manual and labour intensive and, and quite awful actually, chasing money via phone and email. Um, so what we actually then discovered was an online account system that would do regular follow up. It's not zero, it's actually one called FreshBooks. Um, and we found that that meant that people were paying us. And just making it as easy as possible for them too, like even, even allowing online payments um, is a fantastic solution. So we've managed to get it down to an average of nine days, which is, is pretty unreal, and that keeps that cash flowing for our business, which is um, really, And really it's just being creative with how people can pay you as well. Have as many options as possible. I think I've got five or six. Yeah. Um, and the easier you make it, the easier it is for people to pay you. Did we get some ideas on that um, slide, people? Are we, we going to change some of our payment terms or look into auto reminders payment systems? Cool. We've got a few smiley faces. Very good to see. All right, cash flow tips. There's a lot in the workbook. Um, Melanie's already given you a few tips. Are there any others that you can add to cash flow tips, Melanie? I think the best, the one I like the most is just to have, is to make sure you know um, how many days it takes for people to pay you, but also when you have to pay your suppliers, so that you've really got that clear in your head, so that you know what's happening, and also having that cash flow forecast. Um, Ninety-nine percent of my successful businesses have a cash flow forecast, and they monitor it daily or weekly, um, and they know they can tell me today what their position is in two months' time based on what's happening at the moment, and that, I find, the key. Sure. 
sure. And there's a little prompt down there, people, to right now, I encourage you to ask yourself, how many of these types of things we've been talking about tonight have you already implemented? And which ones would you like to implement to improve your cash flow? Because if you do, your business will be in a much better place. Um, another tip tonight is that you must have a budget. We'll wait the um, you know, uh, national budget when that comes around. But you need to um, make a big deal of that in your business as well. So you need to consider your lease costs, plant and equipment, initial stock, insurance, all that list there, income tax, advertising and promotion, etc. So look, what a budget is, is as simple as saying these are the types of um, expenses and incomes I think I'm going to have and then actually tracking what you actually do have actual to, you know, anticipate a budget and saying whether you're over or under and um, that's sort of getting into that cash flow forecasting stuff, isn't it, Melanie? Because then you start so far over budget and what you anticipated and whether you need to find, you know, other sources to make up for that. Um, any budget, what budget tips, Melanie? Yeah, once you have a budget, you can change it into a cash flow. Um, and you need your accountant, if you're not able to do that, ask your accountant or your bookkeeper and they can help you do that. Um, the key for a budget is the bottom line of your budget has to be what you're hoping to get from the business. And it has to be realistic um, because if you make it too unachievable and too much of what potentially could happen, um, it's quite disheartening if you don't make it. Also, you sort of lose perspective of what's actually happening. Um, a good tip is that with your budget, once you've done it, don't shelve it. Put it into, in my album, QuickBooks both have functions where you can put your budget. So each month I get out of my my album system, my budget to actual. So I can monitor how the business is going, looking at one document as to how I budget it should go for the year. So that's a really good thing to use. Sure. Hands up. How many of you have got a budget already in place? Interested to see. Few of you, couple of crosses there. It's really good to see. And those of you who don't, you're all nodding. You're all going to get one in place, aren't you? Yes, I can see you nodding through the sound wave. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've got something up. Managed to skip through the end. Let me just get back. Sorry, I cannot get this up. Flip of the rest there. Okay, do you need finance? Look, you may need it for a startup, you may need it to put some cash, a cash injection into your business to keep it going through a tough time, um, or you may need it to take the next step up and grow if it's the other scenarios too. But the most common types obviously are um, startup financing. You can get a business loan, there's family loans, there's overdraft or line of credit facilities as well. There's a number of decisions you need to make if you're going to go ahead and uh, try and ask for some money from a lender, such as the amount you need to borrow, the type of loan required, the term of the loan, the repayment amount, interest, the fees your business can afford, and the security within your business. Um, I know a story, and I'm sure Melanie would have many too, of a friend who um, had bought a commercial premises, was looking to spit it out to put a day star in there, and this all sort of happened right when the GSD hit. The bank kind of had earlier said they would loan over the money. Halfway through trying to do it, they said they wouldn't. And she's been on quite a journey to try and secure the funds to complete that project because in between she sort of left neither here nor there with her business. You do, and this is where your accountant can help you. Um, or you can get a good, I recommend all my clients get to know their bank manager and there's lots of banks out there who are proactive now where if they say no, go back and say, what do I need for you to say yes? But then at least you can put into your budget the plan so that in four months time you can go back and say, well, look, we have achieved what we said. Will we satisfy it now? So that's if you work with your accountant and your tech manager or your um, line broker, if you all sit down and work together, you will be more successful with the business because you'll have lots of people on your side giving you the ideas of how you can do this. Um, but it's asking the question, what do I need to satisfy? Because now that you need to have security, but you also need to be able to service the loans and the bank needs to have the confidence that they can do that. Because that's been heard as well with businesses falling over and things like that. And it's difficult for them to get money to lend 
And uh, you, I've got people working with you that can help you present it in a nice professional manner too. Sure. There's also a big move by the bank to, to, for them to get to know their customers better and to make a much more bigger effort with customer service. So you've seen the likes of ANZ putting out personal numbers for local bankers um, and most of the other major banks also doing big marketing pushes at the moment on that front. So if they want to get to know you and um, great tip from Melanie to make sure you get to know yours because it, it can make the difference if they know who you are, what you're trying to do. At the end of the day, if they can, they are on the side and they'll do what they can. That combines with an accountant with a powerful team. Good record keeping. We've only got a, um, this slide and one other, um, and then we're going to open it up to some questions. But, you know, obviously this is key. You can't achieve the success. You can't work out budgets. You can't do analysis unless you're keeping good records. So be organised. Get your filing cabinets happening. Work out a system to, you know, look after stuff online. Um, do keep receipts, do um, enter them in. You could be audited. It's on average six years, isn't it, Melanie, that a business could potentially be audited and, and need to have all this in good order? Um, I don't know the statistics, but I know that the tax office has increased their audit activity and now things are computerised. They're doing a lot of auditing if your gross margins and that aren't what your industry average should be. So, the audit activity has increased, and I know it's increased quite a lot over the last 12 months. Um, yeah. So having good records is easier. Lots of um, cash-based businesses are targeted in particular as well. You know, taxi companies, tradies, hairdressers, I've heard a lot of those sorts of businesses thinking, oh, I'm a small person, I'll never get you know audited. And um, what do you know? No, they're taking a really close look because um, sometimes you're pretty aware that these are often run on a cash basis. Look, finally, the credit quality. We have kind of um, looked over it, but just a couple more tips on that front. Competition. We do understand that if you're looking at setting your credit policy, that is how long you'll let people take to pay and whether you've provided that product or service um, before you do accept payment. It's competition. We understand that if your competitors um, aren't doing the same with you, this might give you a guideline. The business. How much can you actually afford to give? Your accountant will be able to help you um, work at that and what your credit limits will be and how long your payment cycles will be. Um, would you reward them like Melanie suggested if they pay up front offering a discount? We do ourselves sort of stage process where say a website or a project, if you're doing some project work this may suit, fifty percent up front so we do have the funds to pay the contract and get the payment um, the project underway. We do twenty percent on seventy five percent completion and 25% on satisfactory completion before we actually release the, the proper job. So we've got to make the whole back if they don't pay. Um, customers, what are you going to do if they don't pay late? You know, do you have um, a legal team? Do you have a debt collection agency? Sometimes it's well worth outsourcing to them as well rather than chasing them and spending a lot of time on it. And it's also good to remove yourself from the situation because, you know, they may come good, they may pay the debt, and you may be able to continue with a business relationship, which would be ideal. Um, and what is the aim of your credit policy? Um, you, you should have some kind of simple statement as well. And if you want more tips on the credit policy, I'd encourage you to go back to the workbook once again. So look, questions. Melanie's here online, ready to take any calls. Um, we'll just show you the poll and some of the results too that we had before. But if you'd like to just raise your hand, indicate you might have if we've got um, any hands, don't be shy. It's a fantastic opportunity. You don't have to travel today. You don't have to book in. And you don't have to pay any money to talk to a professional accountant. Not seeing any hands, you shy people. Come on, one of you must have a question for Melanie, I would have thought. Speak now or forever hold your key. You can always um, text us your question if you're not so... Um, if you're not so confident speaking, but it's really not scary, it's just a little chat and no question is a silly question. Not getting any activity there. So, look, I'll um, keep moving forward. Perhaps you're, you're all a bit tired and wanting to call it a night. Um, well, thank you, Melanie, for your really valuable contribution tonight. It's been great having you online. And um, for those of you who are keen to learn more about financial management, the more advanced webinar on this is called a how-to. 
it's actually taking place very soon, November 1st, and um, Melanie is going to be online again um, to run through and share some more knowledge on this area. So thanks so much, Melanie, for um, being a part of tonight. You could just stay on a little bit longer too. That'd be great. Yeah, no problem. This um, second one down, now that um, one is a really important one. We ran it for the first time recently, but business continuity planning is all about preparing for a disaster or emergency. It's about um, preparation, um, um, prevention, response and recovery. And with the huge cyclone season we're anticipated to have, this is no joke, people. It's big in the media right now for a reason. Um, Parliament was this week briefed on what an issue it could potentially be. Um, you guys need to get ready, and it's so much better to be safe than sorry. If you'd like to know all the things you need to think about towards this possibly crazy cyclone season, get on and register for that webinar happening on November 17th. And if you know anyone in particular in cyclone prone areas, um, or who you just don't think are ready, please encourage them to do so too. Finally, the 29th of November, we've also got planning your successful business. As a business plan and just having a direction and, um, you know, the steps to take in between is an issue for you, you can see some benefit in getting on. Again, it's free. Why not? Jump on and see if you can learn something. And hopefully we can impart something with your knowledge. So just like you registered for this one, all of those you can register on the business.qrb.gov.au website now. Now, I'm just going to log out here a second and show you as well that apart from webinars, CD offers a huge range of information on this website. But if you were to scroll down on the right here, can, is that going okay? Um, you might have a, a sound issue right now. Okay, sorry, I think there's just a sound technical glitch there. I think we're back in time. I was just pointing to the business.qld.gov.au website. Look, click on this workshop and seminars one. Did you know that there's often great workshops happening in your area too? So let's say I wanted to out of the resource topics, gain more information about business. Let's say I was interested in financial and accounts stuff like we covered tonight. I can click next. There's actually none on that topic, so you know. <laughs> that is law. I'll pick another one. How about planning? Click next, and you will be produced with a list of upcoming um, workshops. Managing your cash. That's perfect, isn't it? That's um, something that we've been talking about. You can read all about the upcoming thing and where it is and how you can register for it. So look, there's some in Springwood, Spring Hill, Roma, Ashley, Fulcher, different times, different days, all re reasonable prices, just $44. So please go on the website, see if there's anything there for you. Apart from the website, there's also a hotline I want to make you all aware of, 1300 363 711 now, you can call this number anytime and ask them anything related to business. It could be, do you know anyone who could help me with this? Is there any template for that? Um, they may well be able to answer it there and then, and if they can't, they'll certainly point you in the right direction. So write that down and utilize that fantastic service as well. Now, finally, um, we really appreciate you. We've just um, text you all. It should just be popping up right in front of you. Um, a link to a survey. This will only take for about five minutes to complete. I would love it if you could stay online right now and quickly um, do a few quick and flips to give us some feedback on how you found tonight's webinar. Um, it really just does help us to improve them for the future. Um, this is the first time we've ever run this topic, so it's particularly important that tonight we get your feedback on whether it covered all the stuff you needed, um, whether you wanted more of something else. Um, what you thought is myself and Melanie as well. So be as honest and open as you like. All of your constructive criticism is very welcome. So, um, Melanie, thanks once again for giving up your valuable time. It was great to have you today. And um, we look forward to welcoming you on.